will sing and shout the victory. Amen. Praise God. It's good to see all of us here tonight. And uh, hopefully you are doing all right this evening. Looking forward to what we have in store tonight. And we're just going to go ahead and sing some good praises to the Lord. Hear from the Word of God. Pray a little while. Spend some time in prayer with one another. And we'll just have a good time. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, those of you joining us by way of the internet, thank you as well for coming. Let's all stand and let's sing a good congregational Everybody will be happy over there. Now listen, I know everybody's going to be happy over there, but we can practice being happy over here. So I believe that we have something to be happy about, praise the Lord. So let's sing to the housetop. And uh, just uh, I've heard Brother Joe say, I hope we shout so loud tonight that the rabbit won't run her through the field for about a, a week or so. So that'd be wonderful if something like that would happen. But let's sing this good song. Brother Don, you come on ahead and you lead us this evening. Amen. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond Where the saved of earth you'll soon the glory share Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there Shout and sing God's praise Everybody will be happy over there Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers Will be singing round the throne In that land where no one ever knows a care And the Christians of all ages Will join in the triumph song Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy Happy over there We will shout and sing His praise We'll be happy over there Let's sing it all We will hear nobody praying And no mourning in that land For no burdens there will be for us to bear All the people will be singing Glory, glory to the Lamb Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing God's praise. Everybody will be happy over there. There we'll meet the one who saved us and who kept us by his grace and who brought us to that land so bright and fair. We praise his name forever as we look upon his face. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praise. Everybody will be happy over there. Y'all are singing so good, so they're going to play through a verse of the chorus. Welcome somebody, give them a fist bump, handshake if you'd like, and only if you're married to them can you kiss them. Go ahead and wait, shake somebody's hand. I said, I 
I think we can go ahead and be happy over here as well. You go ahead, be seated. Brother John, if you will, come on down here, and uh, you open us up in a word of prayer. I thank God for the ministry that Brother John has. He's been off at a missions conference. He's all fired up, ready to go, praise the Lord. And I'm thankful for him and the ministry that God has helped him and touched him with. And uh, I'll be honest with you, he's, uh, he's in there with some folks that I don't know that I'd be able to reach, but thank God Brother John can preach them uh, for the glory of God. And he's going to open us up in a word of prayer. And let's just worship God tonight. Come on, Brother John. You just drag on. Let, me, uh, let me back up here for just a minute. That ministry that we have is not my ministry. That ministry is Harvest Baptist Tabernacle's ministry. Y'all just allow me to go. And I appreciate that very much. But without the support of this church, we couldn't do anything at all. And uh, we keep a, a, a list of uh, what we do each month. And I shared that with the church last night and uh, about how many meetings we've had in, in the month of, Mar uh, month of uh, January. It was, uh, the hundred, it was over 140-something men received Christ in January. So... Every one of you folks had a part of that, and we appreciate that so much. And uh, so, uh, Brother Poo uh, and Brother Chris, they go to a uh, county jail down here on Sunday night, some. But we're involved in a lot of things, and we involved in the homeless ministry. I got a call from Brother Hill yesterday and, uh, about some uh, openings. When COVID came in, a lot of churches that come down there every every night, they have a different church. And some of those churches called and told them that they wasn't coming back for COVID. But I promise you one thing. I bet they didn't, get, they didn't quit going to Walmart. I bet you that. Or the service station. So I told Brother Hill, I said, here's what you do. Every one of those churches that say they're not coming, you call us. And we'll go. Brother Poole goes for me sometimes. We'll go and uh, uh, we'll take the gospel to him. But uh, this church allows us to do that. And I love my church. I love my pastor. And, uh, you know, a church is where we, we come alone. God's people comes alone for an hour, maybe on Wednesday night, a couple of hours on Sunday, Sunday night. And we get along and we build one another up, pray for one another. So we can go on out in the next week and uh, we can make it through the next day. I tell you this, we need one another. We need one another. You get out there in that world and try to make it by yourself. See how, see how far you get. Tell you won't get too far. We need one another. I don't know what all that was about, but I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. Say amen. Brother Kramer, uh, Brother Kramer, uh, has been a blessing to us ever since we we got started and does a great job and uh, it's just so many different people that uh, helps get this thing going and uh, even uh, every day. Brother Walt Pickens and I will be down in South Georgia tomorrow. Uh, we'll be in two different prisons tomorrow. We'll be down there all. I'll leave my house at 5 o'clock in the morning. I won't get back till 12 o'clock tomorrow night. And you said, don't you get tired? Oh, yeah, I get tired. But guess what? Jesus got tired. Jesus got tired. If he walked that extra mile, what is it for me to walk another mile? Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, you've been good, so good to us. Lord, we thank you for this church. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, for who it stands on. We stand on the solid rock. We thank you for that, dear Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you that this church is always prayer in this church, dear God. There's always praise in this church, dear God. The gospel's always preached here, dear God. The gospel's always taught here, Lord. We thank you for the ones that stands and do that every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday evening, Brother Shane, Lord, and the music, Lord, that's here in our church. We thank you for Brother Tom. Lord, I want to lift our young people to you tonight. Lord, those teenagers back there. Lord, some of them really need our prayers. Lord, they're fighting with the world every day. The world's pulling at them, dear God, trying to get to them, dear Lord. And the uh, old devil get to our children, Lord. It, 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 it breaks our heart. And Lord, 
we ask you that you'd bless them. And Lord, I pray that they'd make up their mind as, as young, young people to follow you and live for you, dear God. And Lord, we thank you for the ones that's been saved here recently. Ask you continue to work, dear God, the Holy Spirit of God have his real rule and way here in our church, Lord. We thank you for all of our missionaries all over the world, dear God. I don't believe the sun ever sets on the ministry here at Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. We thank you for that. And the doors you open for us, dear God, we thank you for that, dear Lord. Lord, we want to pray for our, our country. Lord, you know it all. There's nothing that's hid from you. And Lord, you know all about it. But Lord, I pray, dear God, that this country would turn back to you. We'd see revival, dear God. And Lord, we just ask you to ask you to touch it. Ask you to feel Brother Shane tonight. Use him to challenge us from the Word of God. Lord, I want to thank you for the Word of God. Lord, I want to thank you for the ones that pinned it down. Lord, you chose them men to pin it down, that we'd have a copy of it to hold in our lap and our hand, dear God, and read during the day or night whenever we wanted to, to read it, be encouraged by the Word of God. We thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit of God that lives and rules and reigns in a Christian's heart. We thank you for that. Lord, I want to pray for the Blackstock family. Lord, my niece went to be to heaven at 4 o'clock this morning, 52 years old. I pray for her children, Lord, she left behind. Lord, I pray for them. I ask you to touch them, dear God. And Lord, I want to tell you we love you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Amen. I tell you, I'm excited about what God's doing at our church, and we always have something going on, it seems like, and I'm excited about that. And a lot of people say, we have too much happening at our church. I believe that that's not the case. We have a great time enjoying, and uh, the fact that we have something for everybody, every age group, the navigators, the nursery people are working hard, the navigators, Brother Joseph does a wonderful job, Brother Tom doing a great job with the teenagers. Uh, of course, Pastor do a phenomenal job preaching here uh, at our church, and we're so thankful, of course. And then he goes out uh, to the highways and byways and other churches and te teaching and preaching the Bible there as well. And our church is blessed because of those ministries, and I so much uh, am thankful to be a part of this. But let's go ahead, let's sing one more time. Let's stand one more time. Let's sing a good song, uh, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. I'm thankful that I have the everlasting arms of God that I can lean upon. And he's never, Brother Kyle never let me down. Amen. And uh, so thankful. Now listen, uh, I know it's a Wednesday night and I know y'all have fought hard. But we can have a good time in the house of God if we want to have a good time in the house of God. Amen. So let's just enjoy our time. Page number 359 or watch those screens. Brother Don, come on, lead us. All right, buddy. What a fellowship, what a joy divine Leaning on the everlasting arms What a blessedness, what a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning I'm safe and secure from all alarm Leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, I'm safe, secure, from all alarm, I'm leaning, leaning, I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, I'm leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. I'm leaning, yes, leaning, I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Amen, amen. Go ahead, be seated.
seated and uh, so thankful for the Cox family. They're going to come around and sing a couple songs for us here in just a little bit. Y'all go ahead. Y'all come ahead and get ready while I'm making a few announcements. But thankful for them. They're at ministry. Make sure you remember this Saturday we will be having the memorial service for Brother Randy Winsett that passed away. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, we want to make sure that we're praying for that family. It is Saturday, 1 o'clock. We're going to be having visitation right here in the sanctuary from 1 to 2. And then at 2 o'clock, we'll be having the memorial service right here in our sanctuary. So you make sure you come out and support this family. It's a difficult time. It's a difficult time for to uh, always to lose a loved one, but thankfully, we know where he is. He's by his testimony. He had trusted Christ as his Savior. And uh, so thankful for the friend that he had in Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are able to have that friend as well. So then also Sunday morning we're starting at 10 o'clock right here in our Sunday school. I want to encourage you that if you've not been part and not part of a Sunday school class, come and make sure that you're part of it. We're going to be starting a new series that we're going to be teaching on looking through salt and light. When in Matthew chapter number 5, what is Jesus Christ talking about? How are we salt? How are we light? What does it mean to be salt and light? What are those directions? What does it look like? And what was salt and light used for during that time? And how can we be that salt and light that we need to be? So for the next eight weeks, from March to the end of April, we're going to be doing that. Uh, but you say, well, Brother Shane, there's nine weeks between uh, March and April. Well, for the Easter Sunday, we're going to start at 1030 that morning not be having Sunday school so we're just going to take a break on the Sunday school that week but I'm looking forward to that time and then also uh, 1045 every Sunday morning we have a good time of prayer so make sure you guys go out go over to the Oasis have a time of prayer to be able to pray for our pastor pray for those that are uh, need salvation those that need to be drawn wooed back to the Lord Jesus Christ and we need to pray that God will have liberty in our services as well so pray for them and then of course we have our offering for the children's home in India that is up uh, available for us every Sunday after every service. As a matter of fact, you can do that. We had donations after the Sunday or Wednesday morning service this morning. If you would like to do that, there is a change offering available. You can put it out the box there. And then, of course, this Sunday, the first Sunday of March, we're going to be having and receiving a special offering. Now, those young people, they're going to come by and they're going to have something and they're going to wait for you to put something in the plate. Praise the Lord. And uh, that'll be all right. So make sure that you give them something good. My granny, uh, you know, y'all don't even know what, uh, well, I'm talking to people that know what grannies are. Praise the Lord. There's nanas and nanas and other names nowadays. These, but granny, praise God, my granny, she said, now I'm going to give you a long green. You know what a long green is? It's not pennies and quarters and dimes and nickels. It's a dollar, five dollar, ten dollar, fifty dollar, twenty dollar. Praise the Lord. You just go ahead and you give these young people a great offering, and we're looking forward to that. Go ahead and make the Cox family welcome this evening. We're so thankful for them. Thank you, guys. Love y'all. circumstances only God knew about but I left them at the altar and I can say without a doubt I'm free to worship free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord after all he's done for me I've got so much to praise him for all the chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship, free to worship the Lord. Well, there are so many things that I've been through in my life. 
don't know the many times that God has touched my mind. All the things that used to bind me now are laying at my feet. So if you don't want to praise him, then please don't hinder me. I'm free to worship, free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord. After all he's done for me, I've got so much to praise him for. And all the chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship, free to worship the Lord. All those chains that had me bound will never hold me
was heaven's greatest loss. Heaven's door was hung at Calvary, and it hinges on the cross. Heaven's door was hung at Calvary, and it hinges on the cross. Loved Good's family singing, praise the Lord. I'm excited that uh, the Lord has brought them along our direction and in our church, and we're just excited to have them here uh, whenever they're able to make it be a blessing, praise the Lord. And then, of course, continue to be a blessing as they're called to go out and about to whatever God has in store for them as well. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Psalm chapter number 27 this evening. We've been going through the book of Psalms and enjoying the good study through the book of Psalms and just hitting those here and there and we diving one more time into the uh, Psalm of David in Psalm chapter number 27. Now, I'll be honest with you, some people are conflicted as to if David uh, wrote the entire book. Because if you look, and it's amazing, uh, you go through the very first six verses, and the very first six verses are all about praising God and then having a good time and being confident in the Lord. But then chapter number 27, verses 7 through 14, the remainder of the chapter, it seems like there's a turn of events. There seems like there's something that, that turns around. And some have questioned whether that, that how someone would turn around so completely and so directly, so quickly. Uh, and I also say, uh, how can someone turn from confidence to cowardice in just a fleeting moment? Or how could someone change from trusting to trembling in just a fleeting moment? Or how could someone go from faith to fear in just a moment? Well, I believe I'm guilty of that myself. I believe that each and every one of us are guilty of that because at any moment our, conf uh, our confidence can turn, be turned into cowardice because of the conditions that we are in, because of the circumstances that we are in and in our life. Because at, in the blink of an eye, something can happen in your life that will turn your world upside down. To be completely honest with you, Brother James, we are all one phone call or one text message or one email or one opening of some news story from absolutely our lives being completely and utterly turned around. So I would say that I believe that David could turn just in just a moment because he could be so confident that God is doing great and mighty things but then all of a sudden be fearful of what's going on. But you also see a natural progression of this psalm as well. Why? Can you see that natural progression? I believe that when you begin to praise and you begin to thank God and you begin to see great and mighty things that God has done, then that turns you to prayer. You begin to beg God. And that's what verses 7 through 14 is really truly a prayer of David. The first six verses, he's praising God. He's excited about God. He's saying, God, you're wonderful. And who do I have to fear? And why do I have to fear anything? Because you're on my side. Then as you get to the verses 7 through 14, there's a turn of that direction. And, and it may goes in that natural progression. But I want you to look in verses number 4 through 6 is where we really truly want to take our text tonight. Look with me in Psalm chapter number 27. Look at verse number 4 with me. The Bible says this, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek after thee, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, or in the time of trouble, he shall hide me, praise God, in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Glory to God. And when I get there, I'm just excited to get right there. Glory. Y'all just have to pray for me to slow down tonight. But the secret place he will hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. He's saying I could be surrounded by all the enemies of this world and I could be surrounded as far as the eye can see. The enemies could be upon me, but listen now, my head is above them. I'm lifted up above my enemies. Why? Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises 
unto the Lord. Now, I believe that we are placed on this earth, Brother Jose, for one and one reason only, to make much of the Lord Jesus Christ, to make much of God, to sing the praises of God. This is what we are told to do. I love the very last, about the last five or six chapters of the book of Psalm. And those, uh, I believe it starts in 145 and goes to 150. It begins with praise ye the Lord and ends with praise ye the Lord. The next chapter begins with praise ye the Lord and ends with praise ye the Lord. I believe, Brother Earl, that means that we ought to praise the Lord. I believe we ought to, with our mouth, praise the Lord. Now, I understand that we can raise our hand and we can shed a tear, but how else are we going to praise somebody or something that if we don't use what God has given to us, our voice? Now, I'll be honest with you. I know that there's a lot of churches around that some churches believe that it's kind of uh, uh, it's, 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 it's disrespectful to shout or to, to say amen or to say, hey, I, I'm sorry, I don't go to a church like that. I'm glad that I don't go to a church like that. I'm glad that I can express my joy to the Lord. I'm glad that I can raise my hand and shout hallelujah and nobody gets scared. Amen. Uh, I'm thankful that we can do that. But here in our text, it shows this great affection that David has for going to the house of the Lord. And I'll be honest with you, the place that we go to church at is a wonderful place. We have a great pastor. We have good people. We have the family of God that we can come around and enjoy. We can share one another's burdens. We get to come to this wonderful place. It's a beautiful facility. We have padded pews. We have heating and air conditioning. We have a bunch of toilets, praise God. I think some of the people, a lot of people were really excited about all that. Amen. But we have all of these wonderful facilities. You go around the campus of this church, and God has tremendously blessed Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. So we get to come to this place. Now, notice that I'm saying that we get to come to this place. We should not, out of obligation, come to this place. I come because I'm supposed to. No, you come because you get to. You come to church and worship God because you enjoy getting to worship God as a corporate people, as a church body of Christ. As we get to lift our hands and praise with one another, we get to get down an altar and pray with and for one another. We get to sing the praises of God. We get to enjoy that wonderful time together. We are certainly blessed people. We get to do all these things. We get to see people saved. We get to see people baptized. We get to see people rededicate their lives. We get to see people called into the ministry. We get to see people that grow in their spiritual growth for the Lord Jesus Christ and sent out into the highways and byways through missionaries and missions. We get to see all of those things take place here in the house of God. And David said, hey, I enjoy getting to go to the house of God. As a matter of fact, in our text that we're saying, in verse number 4, he's saying the one thing that I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I'm going to go after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now, Brother John has very uh, eloquently said that we don't get to spend a lot of time here. Let's just be honest. I, I have done research, Brother Wade, and uh, I, I think about things. I, I'm, a, I'm one of those kind of guys. So I think... That if you go to Sunday school, you go to Sunday morning service, you get to go to Sunday night service, and you go to Wednesday night service, out of the 24 hours, 7 days that you have in a week, there's 4 hours that you spend in the house of God. Now, how, how much time do you spend in your career? Don't answer me. How much time do the children and grandchildren that you have spend at school? How much time do they have watching television? How much time do they surf the internet? Or do you surf the internet, read other books, read other ma magazines, articles, whatever, you, whatever your thing is? How much time are you devoting that if we go to church, every time the doors open here at our church, we only get four hours? Well, if Brother Joe's preaching, five. Praise the Lord. That's a joke. Don't get mad at me. I, I love him. Praise the Lord. But we get to have those wonderful times here in the Word of God and in the house of God. And David was never sad about going to the house of God. Now, I'll be honest with you. I never once, Brother Earl, I never once woke up on a Sunday morning and said, Dad, are we going to church? Because had I said that, I don't know what would have happened. I was smart enough never to say that, praise the Lord. 
I was smart enough to never think that are we going to go to church or what are we going to do? Or we decided do I, I don't feel like I don't feel like going to church today. So hey hey, how about y'all just go on and let me go? I never questioned whether we were going or not. Praise the Lord. Uh, and, and I'm not bragging about that. I'm saying thank thank God that I had a family that was saying, hey, we're going to go and make a priority of how the house of God. I understand people get sick. I understand people have to work. I understand that there are things that come up. I understand all of those things. But the house of God was a priority. And David said, hey, I enjoy. I love getting to go to the house of God. It is the highlight of my day when I get to go to the house of God. Now, I'm hoping that it is the highlight of your life every time you get to come through the doors of this church. Every time you may be able to open up the live stream and be able to enjoy the good time that we're able to have here at our church. And I believe it is a good time. I enjoy. I get to come here. I get to be here every day of the week, praise the Lord. And it's, and it's a good place. I'll be honest with you. There are Monday mornings when whoever Sunday services were so good that you can walk in on Monday and you can still feel something happening. You say, really, truly, is that right, Brother Shane? Absolutely. Why would I stand up here and say something that's not true? I'm saying that with all of a shadow of a doubt that that is exactly what's happening. And you think about what David had to say so many times about the house of God. Now, I'm excited to be here tonight. I hope you're excited to be here tonight. But I want you to hear what a couple of things that David said. Look with me in Psalm chapter number 23. The book of Psalms, chapter number 23, verse number 5, or excuse me, verse number 6 he says this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. That means I'm going to church, praise God. I'm enjoying getting to go to church. Look with me, if you will, in Psalm chapter number 84. The book of Psalm chapter number 84, verse number 10. The Bible says this, 84, Psalm 84, verse number 10. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Now, I believe that David is getting excited about going to the house of God. Go with me a little further. Psalm chapter number 122. Psalm chapter number 122, the very first verse says, I was glad when they said unto me. Amen. I love it. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm thankful to get to go to the house of the Lord. And then with lastly, you go to Psalm chapter number 100. The book of Psalm chapter number 100, verse number 4, simply says this, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now, I'll be honest with you, Brother Joel, I got excited about getting to go to the house of God. And then I started reading, Brother Jose, what David said about what he got to go to the house of God. Now, I get to go to the house of God at a completely different, separate time than David got to go to the house of God. David had to go to the house of God whenever he could only go so far. Yes, amen, hallelujah. David could only go so far in. He could only get to... David was a great person. He was a prophet. He was not a priest. David was a, a, a preacher of sorts that he could go and he could do that. But I believe that David thought that church was a good place to be and the house of a personal God that he had. Now, we've been on a few weeks that we've been talking about this personal God. And I believe that the God that David served is the same God that I serve. And he's just as personal to me as he was to David. And I thank God that he can be just as personal to you as he is to me. I believe that God will get as close to you as you will allow him to get to you. I believe that God will get to as close as you will say, Hey, God, I want to get a little closer. Hey, God, I want to get a little closer. I want to spend a little more time with you. I want to be a little closer to you. I believe that this personal God... Now, look with me in chapter number 27, our text chapter. But look at verse number 3 real quickly by way of introduction. Though, though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though a war should arise against me, in this will I be confident. Now, how did he gain this confidence, Brother Wade? He gained this confidence because he spent time in the house of God. He had a personal relationship with God. He had a personal God that he was personally involved with, that he knew, that he talked with, he walked with, he enjoyed. And we get to do the same thing. 
We get to enjoy that same God. Turn with me over to Philippians chapter number 1. The book of Philippians chapter number 1, I believe that Paul got just as excited about this as being confident. Psalm chapter, or Philippians chapter number 1, verse number 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. So Paul was just as confident in what Jesus Christ has done as what David said, that I am confident in what God has done for me. Glory to God that I can be confident and know that the same God that he served and I serve is the same God that can confidently do what I need him to do in my life just as he was able to do what he needed in his life. I'm excited about to be able to see that when you look in Psalm chapter number 3, verse number 6. That one more, verse number 20, chapter number 3. Go back to Psalm chapter number 3, verse number 6 with me. He said, listen, I've got a lot of things that's going on. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that, uh, that have set themselves against me, round about me. There are a lot of things that's going. There's a lot of people that are going against me. There's enemies that are surrounding me. But I'm not going to be worried about them because I've got God on my side. Paul said the same thing. Hey, I'm confident of this very thing and mo there's a lot of things that are happening in my life but I'm not going to worry about that because the God I serve is bigger. The God I serve is greater. The God I serve is stronger. The God I serve is more powerful. The God I serve is the one that is, the one that is almighty. Glory to God. I'm the one that gets to go to see Him and He cuddles me up in His arms and I get to enjoy the presence of God. You look through these chapters, you see these verses, and Paul found the same thing that David found and testified. When he was testifying in Acts chapter number 20, he goes on and he says that I'm confident of these things. I don't have to worry about what you're going to do to me because God is in control. Confident. How is that? Because I spent time in the house of God. Because I spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I spend time with God Almighty. But I want you to look with me as we open up this chapter, chapter number 27. Look at this very first verse. He establishes who God is to him. Who is God? Verse number 21, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now I'll be honest with you. I used to be afraid of a lot of things, but I'm not anymore. Why? Because I've got God on my side. I'm still afraid of my mother-in-law a little bit. Still afraid of my father-in-law a little bit. Still afraid of my mom and my dad because they still tell me that if I do something wrong, they will bend me over their knee and whoop me. And I believe, Brother Richard, that they would do that. Of course, the whoopings that I got from my sisters were worse than anything that I got from mom and dad. I'll be honest with you. Can I get an amen there? Amen. But I tell you, I'm afraid of those things. But God is on my side, and I'm confident knowing that he is. But what is God? Who is God? Well, he's saying that he, God is my guidance. God is my guide. In verse number, uh, verse number 1, he says that he's my light. He's showing me the way. He's opening my pathway. We looked last Wednesday night at the pathways of God and the path that God opens up and illuminates to each and every one of us and shows to each and every one of us to have the God of guidance that he has. Thank God that he shows us the light, shows us the way. But then he goes on and he says that he's the God of my light and my salvation. He's a God of grace. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that grace has been bestowed upon me. That grace that I do not deserve. That unmerited favor. The one that Jesus Christ reached down and said, Hey, I'm going to save you today. Glory to God. You just have to accept it. And thank God that I had the, the smarts and the uh, be able to know that I needed Jesus Christ without a shadow of a doubt. That I needed Him and the grace of God. And the God of grace came to me and showed His salvation to me that day. And then also we have the very end of it. It says that the Lord is my strength. Lord is your strength, how is that the God that guards you, that carries you, that takes care of you, that sets a guard right about you? Hey, the God that I serve is the God is the one that's right before me and the one that's right behind me and the one that's to my left and to my right. And if that don't have it all covered, he's below me and he's above me. And hey, I'm surrounded completely by God. You say, how can you possibly be surrounded by God because he's the God of everything and the God of everywhere. And I get to serve him because he is for me and he is my strength. He is the one that takes care of me. He is the one that guards me. Now, that David establishes 
what who and God what God is and how very confident that he is in the God that we serve then he's been also confirmed in the New Testament that we can be just as confident in that God as well that we don't have to be afraid then we can be confident in the God that we serve that God now turns and says what is my heart's desire because I have spent time in the house of God because I am confident of what God has done for me and will be able to do for me then what is it that God will uh, what is my desire and what should our desires be today but look at verse number 4 with me I want you to look in chapter number 27 verse number 4 one thing have I desired one thing that I have desired that one word means desired really means to request his request was the one that he had confidence in he was the one that was asking. He was asking something of one that he knew he could do something about it. Uh, we've also, we've uh, many times have asked that God would give us something and boy, we may have not gotten it because we ask amiss or we ask of our own lust or we ask of our own desires in, in a different way. But here we have that God is saying, hey, uh, David saying to God, I have confidence in you and this is my request. This is my request to you, God. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after. And what is he talking about seeking after? Fervently fervently, passionately going after God, seeking after Him. Now, I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of times that we don't go after God the way that we really should. Many times that we go after other things and we say, hey, I really want that, I really desire that, I want to go after this, and we don't put the same fervency behind our desire for God. But I want to encourage you tonight that we need to go ahead and say, hey, that this one thing have I desired from the Lord, and this is what I will seek after. I'm not going to go after anything else, God. I desire to have you in my life. I desire more than my career. I want you, God, in my life. Now, this is going to be dangerous. More than my family around me, I need you, God, in my life. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, whoa, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Well, I'm simply saying that if you put God first, everything else is going to fall into place. Everything else will go forth, and I'm going to make sure that I'm serving God and praising God, and that's the thing that I, I, I most earnestly desire. A lot of people say, well, I want sports, I want fandom, I want fame, I want riches, I want glory, I want all of these things. Hey, I'm not worried about that. I'm like the old songwriter, Brother James. I'd rather have Jesus than anything else you go ahead and you take the riches you go ahead and take the kingdoms that are going to burn up with fervent heat one day you go ahead and take what God is going to uh, uh, destroy all and create all things new you can have all of that but God just give me God just give me Jesus just give me the salvation of God and that's all I need boy that's all any of us need but he says look at these verses look at this verse that I will seek after that that I may dwell, <laughs> that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That really word, that word dwell in the very first verse, that very first section means to, to remain, to settle in, to inhabit. It doesn't mean to visit. It doesn't mean to frequent. It doesn't mean to I'll go by there and spend a little bit of time. Dwell, inhabit, remain. I'm going to be there. Now, I love my mom and dad's house. And to be completely honest with you, Brother Wade, I can go to my mom and dad's house, and I don't even have to knock. I don't even have to, probably should. But I don't even have to knock. I know the codes. I know where the key is hidden. I know where everything is. I know the dog's name, and I know that I can kick that little rat across the floor if he comes after me. Amen. Now, Mama would probably kill me if I did that, but I know what I know what everything is. I can do. I can enjoy that. But you know what? It's I don't dwell there. I, I, when I go over, I'll visit with their house. I'll spend a little bit of time. I'll enjoy some good time. I'll even get to enjoy some good food some visitation maybe every once in a while brother John they'll give me a good plate of something and I'll even get a present oh hey brother John they'll serve me that stuff that Heather don't serve me anymore glory to God they'll give me that good stuff you know and, and, and I get to enjoy that time but I don't dwell there I don't remain there I don't inhabit that place 
But when I get to go home, <laughs> there's something about home. There's something about driving up in that driveway at 200 Running Bear Trail, Fayetteville, Georgia, 30214. There's something about just driving up into that spot and I can take a deep breath and I can know whew, everything's going to be all right. I'm home. Because the people are there, they love me. They accept me. And I can get to go there and I can take my shoes off when I walk in. I can get comfortable and I can go to the refrigerator and I can get whatever I want out of the refrigerator. Praise the Lord, because Heather's done bought milk for me. Amen. I can get to go to the pantry and I can find some of them good old tag-along. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for cookies from the Girl Scouts that's been sold lately. Amen. Hey, I can go to those places. I can get anything that I want out of anywhere. I can go to... I can go to any room that I want to go to because it's the place that I remain. It's the place that I dwell. That's how we should be when we get to the house of God. That we can go into this place and we can just make ourselves comfortable because we know that we are at our Father's house. That we are dwelling in the house of of the Lord and we can spend the time we can remain there we can inhabit this is not a place that we come for entertainment this is not a place that we come to just to be able to see another person or to be able to be part of a club or to, to enjoy some uh, facet of the ministries that are here but we are here to dine from the holy heavens of God from the tables that God has set before us we are here to be able to enjoy the Savior to be able to enjoy the people of God to enjoy the good time that we can worship our Heavenly Father Father, we're to dwell here, enjoy that place. And then also what it says, all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord. That word beauty really truly means that I can delight in the Lord. That I can enjoy the good times of the Lord. That I can, uh, not, not just a, a duty, but a delight to serve the Lord. The things of the Lord, just to, not just saying, hey, I have to, or I have to endure this, or I have to endure that, or I have to go over here and do this. But thank God we get to come to church and enjoy the Word of God, and enjoy the singing of God, and enjoy the people of God, enjoy the fellowship of the people of God. Thankfully, that we can come to a wonderful place, that we can dwell, we can delight. And then lastly, I, part of it and to inquire in his temple that we can get direction from here that we can know without a shadow of a doubt that the, temp, the, 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 the pulpit of God or the pulpit of this church is going to be preaching the truth of the word of God that we know without a shadow of a doubt that we can inquire that we can be directed we can consider that word really means to plow through to get deep into enjoy the deep things of God Boy, we get to do that. We get to be in the presence of God. Then when we get to the house of God, we get also the protection of the house of God. And the protection of God, look with me in verse number 5, verse, chapter number 27, verse number 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Boy, David was a man after God's own heart. Now, I'll be honest with you, you look at this, and he was, but he was a warrior, and he was a leader, and he was courageous, and he was compassionate, and he was a prince, and he was a poet, and he was a prophet, but he was not the priest. He could not get into those secret places that he's talking about. He could not go into those places that he desired to be. There was nobody from the tribe of Judah that was able to go into the Holy of Holies. But that was the desire of David to be able to get as close as he possibly could to be able to get into that tabernacle, to be able to get into that because the temple had not been built at this time. But there was, that place was reserved for the priest and David had a desire to be there. But guess what? We can. David said, I want to do that. And now God is, glory to God. Now God's saying, come on. Come on closer. Hey, I, I know that there used to be a court of ladies that you couldn't come any further. Ladies, you couldn't. But then there was a court of the Jews that had to go in a little further. The Jewish men could come in. I know that was that front porch that you could get to. But, but, but I want you to get in a little further. I want you to get to the holy place. I want you to come on in. I want you to go past that sacrificial place. I want you to go past that altar. I want you to come on in. I want you to come into the direct presence of me. 
I want to be in the presence of God. I want to be in that presence and that protection of God's house. Boy, there's that shelter. I want you to look with me in verse number twenty, uh, verse number 5. It says, And in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. What does that pavilion really truly mean? He's talking about, hey, I'm welcomed in the house of God and God's own dwelling place. He's saying that this is my house. And this is the place that I want you to be. Aren't you excited to know that God allows you to be here? You say, Brother Shane, I got out of here on my own volition. No, God gave you a car to be able to get here, and he gave you the money to be able to purchase the gasoline to be able to get here, and God gave you the ability with your legs and your feet to be able to walk into this place, and he's given you hands and arms to be able to raise and to be able to enjoy. He's given you a mouth to be able to shout hallelujah. He's given you the, the eyes to be able to see what God's word is saying to each and every one of us. He's given us ears to be able to enjoy the preached and the singing of the word of God. We can enjoy all these things. Why? Because God has a Allowed us and has protected us in such a mighty way. I know I need to hurry, but look with me at this verse number twenty, uh, verse number five in chapter number twenty-seven. Not only is it a shelter that we have, that pavilion, that shelter that he put, but it's also a secure place. Look at verse number five. It says this: He shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? Now this is good. This is. I hope y'all hold on to yourselves. Praise the Lord. Just hunker down. Put your seatbelts on. Because when I got to this, and I began to really study through this the last few days, the last week of this, that I've been really looking at what God is doing and what he's saying is, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Now listen, I've already said it. There are places that David was not able to go. In the Old Testament, there were Old Testament saints that could not go to certain places. And now, as a New Testament believer, we are welcomed into those wonderful places. But what is that? He's not saying, hey, I'll let you get in the front yard. Or hey, when I invite you into my house, I'll let you into the foyer he's not even saying hey come on into the kitchen and I'll give you something to drink and something to eat or hey let's go to the dining room and enjoy a little bit of fellowship or let's go to the living room he's saying hey I'm going to let you into the innermost parts of my house I'm going to allow you to go where the family is allowed to go I know it's Wednesday night and I know I'm probably not supposed to be getting excited about Wednesday night preaching but this excites me because hey there are places that we can go in each other's houses but there are some places that only family is allowed to go thank God that I'm part of the family of God and God will allow us to get into a wonderful place to be able to go into those secret places, to go into that holy of holies, that place where the ark is, which signified the presence of God being right there. Glory to God. I get to go to the secret place. I get to enjoy the secret places. I get to go where family gets to go. Why? Because I'm a child of God. I am a son of God. I've been adopted into the family. I've been born into the family. And I hope that you've been born into the family. I hope you've been adopted into the family. I hope you're excited about being a mother or, a, or a, a, a daughter or a son of God. I thank God that I am the son of God. I hope that you are as well. But praise God that he lets me in that secure place where the most, uh, most precious place is that God allows me that se secure place. But then there's that steadfast place. Look at verse number 5 one more time with me. And he shall set me upon a rock. Now we all know that that rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. We all know that that is signifying the Lord Jesus Christ because so many times that we have been told that. But that is also a place that's high and lifted up. He shall set me up upon a rock. That's a great place where enemies cannot get to. Not sure that this thing's working. That's a place where enemies cannot get to us because they can try to get there they can try to get up to that spot but until God sets them there glory to God I can't get there brother Joe I cannot get there on my own you cannot get there on your own but when God picks you up out of that miry clay and God sets your feet upon a rock and when God brings you up out of a place where you are a slave of sin but then he sets you on upon a rock and the enemies of the, the devil and the demons of hell are trying to come against you and they are coming and they are coming and you just don't know how you're going to be able to get away from the fire darts of the Satan thank God he sets me up he sets me on that rock and he says hey there's no way that they'll be able to get to you they are absolutely inaccessible to the enemies of God thank God that I'm powerful because I have the Holy Spirit of God within me amen 
Boy, he sets me up out of the reach of enemies. Thank God that we have that. We have the presence. We have the protection. And lastly, I know I got to hurry. I know I got to hurry. Then in right, verse number six, it goes to praise. How's it going to praise? How oh, we see the, the confidence that David has in God, but that affliction that's in his head. Oh boy, when affliction is there, your head begins to get bowed down. But you're in the triumph of something when God has given you victory. Your head is lifted up. And look what it says in verse number six. And thou, mine head, be lifted up above mine enemies, round about me. They may be as far as I can see, but glory to God, I am lifted above them. My head is above them. I'm not having to worry about the affliction of those enemies anymore because I have the triumph of the Lord Jesus Christ I have the triumph of God on my side now the praises burst out forth and begins to pres uh, that present triumph why because that triumph is not here yet but it is confidently awaited and he's saying hey I know that it's good as done because you have promised me now this is when, when, when I get really excited once again. When my studies, I get really excited. I got a little dog at home. Uh, well, he's not really mine. He's Amber's dog, but he puts up with me. And his, his name is Cap, and he gets to run around with me. And every once in a while, I get excited about something that the Lord is showing me in the living room or in the, the dining room or down in my little place. And I start running around, and he starts running around with me, and his tongue's hanging out. He has no idea why he's excited. But I do. I'm excited because God is showing me something amazing through the word of God. When I look at this in verse number 6 and chapter number 27, look what it says. And now my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. But look at this next phrase. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. Now I know that there's a lot of people that say, prove it to me in the Bible that the Bible tells you that God wants you to shout. There you go. There you go. You want to know? We got a victory shout going on right there. That's what the David is saying. He's saying, hey, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to offer in his tabernacle the sacrifices of joy. I'm going to offer up this. You say, well, why would you say that it's a, a shout or a victory shout? Why would you say, hey, I ought to be able to lift up my voice and shout for glory for the Lord Jesus Christ? Because when you break that word down, joy, it means so joyful that I just can't express myself in any other way than to go ahead and let it out and let her rip glory to God and shout hallelujah glory to God amen now I love going to church here because I, I get to sit on the platform and I can see people singing or I can see brother Joe preaching and I'm sitting up here and I can see have you ever seen one of those pressure cookers and you know it's about to happen As a matter of fact I have seen people singing up here and people start getting happy and I have made eye contact just out of the side of my eye and I make eye, tongue, eye contact with pastor and he says uh huh I said then all of a sudden woo then it goes over to another section woo shouts of joy in the tabernacle were sacrifices offering the shout of joy the victory shout thank God that I have been given the victory because greater is he that's in me than he that is in this world and you have been given the victory as well so we might as well just shout about it while we're here because when we get to heaven I guarantee you there's going to be a whole lot of more shouting going on than right here glory to God some of us are going to lose our dignity and we're going to get so excited that Jesus has allowed us into the gates of heaven there we're going to get so excited that we are at the feet of the Savior that we might just be able to say glory, hallelujah, worthy is the Lamb. There's a victory shout right there but then there's the vic vic uh, 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 <clears throat> vigorous song at the end of that verse. Look at it. And I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Notice the directive or the direction of David's song. He wasn't saying, I'm going to sing this song to impress the people of Israel. He wasn't saying, I'm going to sing this song in order that the priest will say, wow, look how well David can sing. He's not saying, look at what I will be able to do. I want everybody to know in the tabernacle how talented I am. No, he's saying, I'm going to sing praises. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. And it doesn't matter 
if it scares you when somebody shouts, I'm sorry. I've grown up with the lady that shouts all my life, even at home. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, not really. But anyway, <clears throat> she's one of those pressure cookers. <clears throat> I've seen mom the other Sunday. Poor, poor Anna was sitting in front of mama. She wasn't expecting it. Neither was anybody else. Neither was Sister Heather. We got home. Heather said, Shane, we had a good service. I said, yes, ma'am, it was great. It was getting good. It was just get to praise God, enjoy ourselves. And boy, there was a shouting going on. She said, yeah. She said, I wasn't expecting your mama to go off. And she said, I don't think anybody else around us was either. She said, I, I tried not to, but I think I jumped four foot off of that pew. I said, no, it wasn't that obvious. And then I think Mandy's getting a little bit of it because she shouted one good time. I believe Sister Kathy's got a little bit of shout in her. I believe Sister Dawn's got a little bit of shout in her. I believe that there's people in this, I believe there's people in this room that got a little bit of shout in them. And you know what? I'm excited that one day I'm going to get to see some of you that thinks that there's no shout in me. It's going to happen. It'll happen because you'll shout and then you'll feel so good and you'll say, glory to God, why have I not done that sooner? And then sometime you'll come to church and say, hey, I want to shout. I want to sing praises one more time. I want to sing praises one more time. And then you say, hey, I want to dwell in the house of God because I want to shout. I want to praise Him. I want to thank God for the protection that I have. I want to thank God for the peace that I have. I want to thank God for everything that God has helped me with. A song that I am not ashamed to sing and to proclaim from the very rooftop. Why? Because the Savior is so good. Because God that we serve, we have triumphed because of Him. We have triumphed and we have a song to sing because of Jesus Christ. Christ. See, the desire of David was obvious. He wanted a fervently desire after go after God. His desire was to fellowship with God. His desire was to have favor from God. And as a child of God, I want to fervently, Brother John, I want to fervently go after God. I want to put God first and foremost. And I want to encourage you tonight. Make God first and foremost in your life. I want to encourage you to have a fellowship with God like none other. I want you to also know that you can have the favor of God because He is good to you. We can have the Savior. and We can enjoy being in the house of God. Now, I'm excited about coming back Sunday. I'm excited about coming back Sunday night. I'm excited about coming back next Wednesday night. And I hope that you say, hey, I want to enjoy the tabernacle of God as much as I can here on this side till one day we get graduated to the tabernacle of God where we will dwell in His house forever. I'm looking forward to that day. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the praise that we're able to have. Thank you for the protection that we're able to have. God, we thank you for the peace, the comfort, the grace, and the mercy that you've given each and every one of us. God, I beg you right now, God, that you would allow us to play a special place in our heart for the tabernacle of God, being in the house of God, enjoying the house of God. Thank you for the wonderful singing that's been done tonight. Thank you for the congregationals of all of us singing praises of God together. Thank you for the musicians, God. Thank you for the wonderful word of God that we're able to hear. And Lord, I pray you just put a little shout in us tonight. Let us go home and shout forth the praises of your holy name. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen and amen.